Hello boys and girls and welcome back to Shanka Show, the place you can learn something new about life in the Soviet Union. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи! В эфире программа Ушанка Шоу. Let's do the numbers though. So hello, 94.9% boys and 4.5% girls. Welcome back to Shanka Show. I guess my cousin Tanya was correct when she told me I should get a degree in food processing and become an engineer at the sausage factory. Okay, so I had a couple of questions I would like to answer today. Curious if there was anything like a pawn shop. I'm assuming thrift stores, like many charities run in the US and Canada, didn't exist. Everyone was poor. And there was another comment. Almost sounds like it turned into a state-run pawn shop. So this is about Torx scene. If you missed that video, link will be below in the comment section. Except instead of reselling the jewelry antique coins of desperate people for a lot more than they paid out, they smelted it down for just its intrinsic value. Speaking of, were there ever pawn shops, flea markets, or otherwise used good stores in the USSR? And one more. I just watched the film Carnival from 1981. In this film, there is a pawn shop where people go to sell their stuff and get small money. How common were pawn shops in the USSR? Okay, come on, guys. Why would you even think that in socialist country, in society where equality was almost reached, well, some people were more equal than others, why would anything like pawn shop even exist? What a silly idea! Why would anyone... What? Excuse me? Oh, I guess we did have something like a pawn shop, but it was called Lombard. Okay, so it's time for a short lesson of the Russian language. Урок русского языка. Lombard. Lombard, this is how we called pawn shops in the Soviet Union and before in Tsar Russia it was also called Lombard. I don't think I would surprise anyone if I claim that the uh, word Lombard is not originally a Russian word. It looks like it was imported. And when I looked it up, apparently the very first Lombard pawn shop was opened in Brussels in 1618. Obviously, Lombard pawn shops existed in Tsar Russia, as you see on this photo. This is uh, city Lombard in St. Petersburg. But soon after October Revolution of 1917, Lombards were banned as the form of capitalist exploitation of the proletariat. Surprisingly, this ban didn't last long. So Lombards were banned in 1919, and just five years later, in 1924, they were allowed again. And you could see similar occurrences happening over and over again in early Soviet history. For example, originally there was no plans for the army in the new Soviet Russia. The plan was every worker, every peasant will have a rifle. And when the trouble starts, everyone's just going to get together, fight off the capitalist invaders, and then go back to the peaceful work. But very quickly, the Soviet government realized that in theory, it sounded great. In reality, they needed an army. And that's what Leon Trotsky created the Red Army. But once again, originally, it was a volunteer-only army. So if you don't want to be a soldier, you don't have to. Similarly, Red Army wasn't supposed to have any officers, and later on they had officers, including even generals and marshals. But today we're talking about Soviet pawn shop, the Lombard. So Sovietskiy Lombardy, Soviet pawn shops were quite different from their capitalist counterparts. American pawn shop, and I'll talk later about my ex personal experience with American pawn shops. Besides providing loans. Pawn shop is also a retail store, right? It will be interesting to find out what kind of percentage of goods that people bring to the pawn shops actually remain in the pawn shop and never being claimed and got eventually resold. I don't know those numbers, but that'll be interesting to find out. Meanwhile, Soviet Lombard was strictly loan business. You provide a collateral, something valuable made from gold, silver, or other precious metals, or even a fur coat if you have expensive a fur coat, in exchange for the money, loan with fixed interest rate. So there was no retail store at the Soviet pawn shop. And I'm glad that one of my viewers mentioned Soviet movie Carnival from 1981. When I scrolled through that movie, I discovered the part of the pawn shop. And actually, that's how I got the screenshots. Because otherwise, there is no really good photos of the Soviet pawn shops out there on the internet. 
So this movie is about a naive girl from a provincial town dreaming of becoming an actress, goes to Moscow to enroll to a theater school. She fails at the entrance exams, but makes new friends and experiences her first love. So if you had a question, who in the world would need services of the pawn shops in the Soviet Union, the country that offered free health care, free education, and extremely cheap housing, here's your first answer. Maybe a naive girl from a provincial town that came to Moscow to become an actress. And to tell the truth, my family never used Lombard services and I never heard of anyone going there to bring gold rings or any other precious items in exchange for cash, but I knew that Lombards did exist in Kyiv. In fact, just today I went on Google Maps and I searched my old neighborhood in Kyiv, and when I went on the Google Street View, sure enough, Miski Lombard, City Lombard, City Pawn Shop, is still there. And I remember that business from the 80s and 90s when I used to live there. But I don't remember ever that place being busy. I mean, I never went inside, but what they show in a carnival movie, like the giant lines and people sitting like it's a train station, I don't recall anything like that. And I will provide the link below in the comment section right to that episode of Lombard in the movie. But as you see in this screenshot, a guy is bringing giant area rug to use as a collateral for some loan. And as you can see in this screenshot, so the guy with the rug just walked by. There's no displays, right? It's just a glass separation between customers and people that accept your goods and give you money. So there's nothing for sale. It's strictly business of loaning money and taking your item. Another screenshot from the same movie. So here's the lady. She brought silver silverware and a guy is inspecting to see if it's real silver. And it's interesting, there's a sign on the right by the lady says, Проверяйте деньги, не отходят кассы. Check your cash without leaving the area. So if you count your money later, you claim that you're short on cash, it's too bad. You gotta check your cash right there on the spot. At some point in this episode, there's a bunch of gypsy people barged in and they behave quite rudely, which is on its own interesting situation. By the way, in case if you missed it, I made a couple of videos about Soviet gypsies. It's called Life of the Roma People in the USSR and my personal experience with Roma people. So I'll provide the link also in the comment section below. But what's interesting on this screenshot is the sign on the door which says Lombard and it tells you the schedule when this place is open. In an opposite wall far away it says Priyom Platine Zolota Siribra. So we accept Platinum gold and silver. And here's another screenshot from the same episode. So here's ladies on the left working with the big area rug, Kavior, and the guy is hanging winter clothes. So this is another function that Soviet Lombard provided. It's actually provided micro storage. So you know in America you have a mini storage. Well Soviet Lombards offered services to store your valuables. So like your winter clothes if it's expensive and you don't want to keep it in your communal apartment, you can come here and store it for up to three months. You pay the fee, of course, to store it, but it's also the provided storage services for Soviet citizens. And I was very excited when I managed to find online this item. It's called Zalogovy Bilet, so that's your pawn ticket. So that's document you receive when you bring an item to get a loan. So let's dig into it. Okay, so front part, as I mentioned, it's called Zalogovy Bilet. So that's a pawn ticket, number 114193. It was issued in Russian Federation, Moskovsky Gradskoy Lombard. So it's a Moscow city Lombard. And Taganska Adelenia, so that's the uh, branch in Taganka region. Amount of loan is 250 rubles. And the item was uh, estimated cost 350 rubles. So... Well, we got about 70% uh, or something uh, of the actual value. This is what the uh, person got uh, cash. The ink stamp looks like April 10, 1941 or 1971. But it looks like a, a person brought a silver coffee pot with uh, silver three silver podstakanik. So if you ever watched how uh, people drink tea in the Soviet trains, they have that metal handle and then a glass cup goes inside. So the person brought a silver coffee maker and three silver those uh, under cups. On the left side of the stick it says a loan is for three months plus one bonus month. 
Then it's a citizen name. Can't really tell. Looks like a Krylov last name. Then his address, number of his passport. You gotta bring your passport. Then the person ink stamp who issued money. Then another ink stamp of the person who got the silver items uh, to put in the storage. And on the right side, there's a talon. On the top right, it's uh, to track the item. So you cut that item and attach to the items. Uh, you cut that little talon. Second one is when you came back to pay your loan back and in interest. So it's right there. So that's the front part. And below it says, частичное погашение суды. So it's a partial pay off a loan. So you can come back over a period of time and give some money back. So every month or something. Okay, so now we're looking at the back of this ticket and it has all the rules. And it looks like it was published in Moscow in 1940. So this ticket is from 1941 for sure. So it states here that Moscow State Lombard is a state enterprise and it's under control of Moscow uh, Soviet of the workers that Lombard is doing following operations. It accepts items for storage. Then also it uh, issues loans to the citizens using as a pawn items of personal use. So valuable, of course, items. So loans being issued for three months uh, plus additional bonus month. After that, uh, the items that loans were in return will be transferred to the state stores and sold according to the value. Now, number four is interesting. So it says if there's extra money left after selling items that weren't um, loans were in return so after covering all the expenses so loan plus interest rate plus fees for storage and fees that occurred uh, during the sale then the person who have any money left you'll get the cash uh, in three years after the sale so it sounds like a more fair deal than american pawn shop in order to get that extra cash you're supposed to have this ticket and your passport and if you didn't claim the money, then uh, after three years, they will be uh, counted as an income of uh, Lombard. Uh, so placing the value on the items brought to Lombard is going according to existing price list and with agreement of the owner. Okay, moving along. So number six, that uh, Lombard will issue this quitancia, this ticket, when it takes the item and you get the money. Number seven, this is interesting. So the charges are 9.6% a year or 0.8% a month. So that's your loan fee. Or for storage, it's 4.8% or 0.4% a month. So they uh, figure out the cost of the item that you want to store and they'll charge you basically 5% a year or 0.4% a month uh, for storing the item. So it's an interesting way of uh, charging for storage. It's not a flat fee. It's based on the value of the item. Number eight, in case if an item will get damaged while being in storage, a Lombard will reimburse you money based on the value. Number 10 explains what to do if you lost your ticket or was stolen. You need to go to a Lombard. You need to write the paperwork. Write down what you gave them number of your ticket which you kept and stuff like that passport and so on okay so number 11 says that you have uh, the right to uh, pay off your loan in parts but no more than twice to the term so you have three months loans you can come and pay monthly but not weekly okay so number 12 lombard is accepting uh, items for storage without issuing any loans uh, on the from one to six months and then you can get additional three bonus months and once again if you don't take your items back after term is up they will sell it congratulations now you know more about soviet pawn shop that i knew before i started researching for this video i couldn't find any stats any numbers how big was business of pawn shops in the soviet union but i don't think it was huge because what kind of unexpected expenses you can uh, have for the Soviet citizen? Maybe funeral or wedding. Otherwise, medical expenses, you know, didn't exist because healthcare was free. So I don't think people used it a lot. But based on the movie, it looks like it was a busy, busy place. And of course, even in the Soviet Union, there were families that couldn't make it from paycheck to paycheck. Of course, we didn't have paychecks, but from salary to salary, for example... The lady next door to us, her husband was like hardcore alcoholic. 
she constantly had to borrow five or ten rubles from my mom until the next uh, paycheck. I was just saying paycheck, but of course we had no checks, just cash. And we all know that American pawn shop is a popular destination for uh, getting rid of stolen items. In Soviet Union, you're supposed to bring your passport and show it. But I have no doubt there's probably was some illegal activities going on. People who worked at the Lombards were offering little money and not asking for passports. So that's probably what's happening as well. I have no idea how many Lombards we had in Kiev during the Soviet days. I mean, it was a large city, almost 3 million people, but maybe we had 20 of them, maybe even less. I know we had only one in this big area that I used to live. But definitely that business exploded after the collapse of the Soviet Union and Ukraine becoming independent and becoming capitalist. And those post-Soviet era pawn shops became like a vacuum cleaners. That's where people were bringing their valuables, grandkids stealing metals of their grandparents and selling them so they could buy alcohol or drugs. So it became like a one-way train. People were just bringing valuable items to sell not to take the loan so they can have some money to survive or have fun. And their business model changed as well. Now they also sell items. So when I was researching for this video, I went on Instagram and other social medias. And you could tell if you search for Lombard, they also show a lot of items they have for sale. And a lot of it is a Soviet era gold rings, you know, metals and other items. And their interest rates skyrocketed as well. I remember when I was visiting my parents in Kyiv and I was walking the street and I see this sign next to Lombard and it says loans from 1%. And I was like, well, 1% a month probably, it's not that bad. It's only 12% a year. It was 1% per day, which means it's 365% a year. It's just ridiculous. There's no way you can pay back uh, that's a ridiculously high interest. And I also had an interesting experience with American pawn shop um, back in 1997, and now I'm writing this book about my adventures in America in 1997. I went to LA to stay with my cousin, and he worked at that time at the pawn shop downtown LA. So one day I was hanging out with him in the pawn shop, kind of checking out stuff, and he showed me this expensive speakers, Bang & Olufsen or some other brand, and he's like, yeah, we got it from the guy last night for 75 bucks or 100 bucks and it's worth several thousand dollars so the owner will take it so the guy just came and gave it to them speakers they gave them cash no paperwork no loans and i was like oh my goodness and it was kind of funny episode so i was watching my cousin and his english was pretty primitive let's put it that way so someone came in and <laughs> my cousin told him give me your id and I'm like, dude, you don't say like that, give me your ID. You're not in a gulag camp. You need to say, can I please see your ID? So I had to teach him how to deal with American customers. <laughs> there was also a lady working there originally from Soviet Union. And I was chatting with her. And she told me, Sergey, in America, pawn shops, it's the only legal business that allowed to rob people without any consequences. And I was like, wow, that sounds like probably very profitable business. So let's summarize what we learned today about Soviet pawn shops. They were called Lombard. They charge 10% interest. They offered micro storage of your valuable goods, like winter coats, electronics, and they weren't that popular. Okay, my friends, it's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please don't forget to like, to share, to tip, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah. Please say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say I cannot. I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong, I won't stop to the top, so you better back off and get lost. I'ma stay loud, stay proud, never running out, never heading south. I'll be spreading out, call it word of mouth, can't put me down, I'll be getting loud. You can never doubt, not what I'm about, have your f***ing cloud, it be raining now. I keep making sound, go another round, jump legend bound, can't stop me now. You don't wanna fuck with me A slow burn like a disease Just tell me that I can and I'll show you things That you couldn't believe Just tell me that I can
say anything negative Cause I just wanna hear it out your mouth, yeah Give me fuel, it's a tool that I use To go ahead and run my f*** out, yeah I take shots, I take loss, I make shots, I miss lots I tell you get big box, you get yachts You swing lots and pop off a big shot I'm done chasing, got big dreams, bigger things, impatient Who's at the top think they need replacement? Who's at the top think I'm gonna erase that face it? I don't give up quick, I don't give up shit I won't give up this Cause I know that I want it, know that I'm on it I'll make it, I promise You don't wanna fuck with me A slow burn like a disease Just tell me that I can't show you things